Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and before we get going with tonight's stories, I just wanted to remind you that you can go to ravenreadshorror.com and peruse the enamel pins, art prints, mugs, and apparel that I have there, as well as some other cool things. If you're interested in gaming, digital art, or fine art, I have channels for those as well that are always linked down in the video description. And thank you, as always, to the patrons of this channel for their generous support. If you're interested in behind-the-scenes footage, desktop downloads, and other fun stuff, you can head on over to my Patreon as well. Link is in the description. With that out of the way, you know what time it is. It's time to grab your gear, get a beverage of choice, get comfortable, and get ready to take another journey into the night. One of my friends died almost a year ago to the day, so this has been on my mind a lot lately. I flew out for her funeral and met up with a group of friends. Together, we drove to the town where she was to be interred. Because we're all poor college graduates, we took the cheap route and shared a hotel room. The ride over was honestly kind of terrifying. Toward the latter part of the trip, conveniently after nightfall, We ended up driving through unfamiliar rural roads that were entirely devoid of other traffic. At one point, we were super lost and caught in a really thick fog, something completely uncharacteristic of the area. My friends joked that it was her ghost just messing with us. When we finally reached the hotel, it was about 11 and we were exhausted. We were all standing around in the lobby waiting to get checked in and it was a bit of a process. And that's when I saw my dead friend in the mirror. She didn't look scary or dead or anything, and she wasn't even looking at me. That's why I didn't immediately parse that it was weird. I looked at her for a second or two and looked back down. When I fully registered what I had seen, I looked back up, but of course, she was gone. Empty space where she had been and all of that. Telling this story now, it seems so cliché. She looked so normal looking though. She wasn't doing any type of scary dead ghost thing. She was just chilling there in the lobby like the rest of us, kind of bored, looking toward the concierge desk. She was wearing this leather jacket she had that fit her really well. Her eye makeup was like it always was. I mean, she looked great. I remember she was wearing these tiny gold filigree earrings that I had gotten her for Christmas. I didn't tell anybody I was with what I had seen because I didn't want to upset them. I still haven't told them. I don't think she was appearing to me or anything. Like, we were friends, but I definitely wasn't the closest person to her of everybody who was there at the time. I know it's likely that I was just tired, and that she was on my mind, and that I imagined it. But I do want to believe that it was true. It was really comforting to see her there. She didn't die suddenly. We all knew that it was going to happen for quite some time. One of her fears was that we would all forget about her when she passed. I chose to believe that she was just following us to make sure we made it to her funeral. Now that I've told the story, I feel kind of stupid, I guess. I just wanted to tell somebody. This happened when I was 14, and I'm 21 now. I lived with my parents in a small, three-bedroom townhouse. I remember not being able to sleep the night we moved in, basically laying there, staring at the ceiling for ages. My closet and wardrobe were made of a sliding glass mirror, which faced the side of my bed. Being unable to sleep, I rolled over and stared at the mirror, and then... My heart sank, and I froze. In the reflection of the mirror, I saw a hooded figure behind me, walking toward me. It looked to be about six feet tall, and basically resembled the stereotypical Grim Reaper type of character. 
I freaked out and turned around, but there was nothing there. I ran out of the room, crying to my parents. I knew that they wouldn't believe me, so I just said that I had a bad dream. But I know for a fact that I was not asleep at all. I've had sleep paralysis many times, and this wasn't that either, so I know it was real. A couple of years later, I told my dad about what happened. He told me that when my brother-in-law's uncle came to visit, he's considered a man of healing in Papua New Guinea, he said he felt an odd presence and then blessed the home. This happened after my encounter. After hearing that, it convinced me that it definitely was an entity and it wasn't my imagination. Since then, I've had no further experiences. I come from a family of pagans and spiritualists, except for my gran who became a strict Catholic. So the paranormal side doesn't really scare me or anything, but this is one incident that will never leave my mind and freaks me out to this day. A few nights prior to this incident, my mother and her friends had a get-together at our house not long after we moved in so that it could be cleansed and so on. But before this happened, one of her friends mentioned that something was off about the energy in the house. So, long story short, they got out the Ouija board. This was one thing they all knew how to open and close properly with the right protection. Anyway, my mother said something negative felt like it was in the room. So they proceeded to close the gate that they had opened. Only, that didn't go right in my opinion because the next few days and nights in the house felt really weird. It felt colder in certain spots, and for some reason I really hated the mirror that was in my room, as it just gave off this weird vibe. So fast forward to the night of the incident, and now this same night, I gave up with the mirror and decided to just take it out of my room. It just really creeped me out, and I needed sleep. Well, around 1 to 2 a.m., I'm not 100% sure on the time, I just know it was in that area. My mom and I were awoken by this loud sound of glass breaking. So, initially, we think someone is breaking in. Both of us take household weapons, just in case we need them, and head to the stairs. This is where I notice the first picture, which is of me and a childhood friend in a frame that was on the wall at the top of the stairway, shattered on the floor. Automatically, I think it's from the force of windows breaking through, so I shrug it off and follow my mother down the stairs into the living room. That's where we turn on the lights, thinking that we could scare the intruder. But no one was there. We look at the windows, thinking that they had already escaped, but we were shocked to notice that the windows were completely intact until my mother looks at the floor, broken glass and frames everywhere. And what shocks and freaks me out the most is that when I look at all the picture frames that were broken, every picture had me in them, whether I was alone in them or not. After that night, I really couldn't settle at all in that house. I ended up staying with a family member and eventually my mother decided we had to move. To this day, I will not have mirrors in my rooms, except a small one in the bathroom, and no frames with glass in it, because I'm legitimately worried that this gate will be opened again. It's been 14 years since that night. So far, so good. What is it about mirrors that make them so creepy? I can't figure it out but I do have a true personal story involving one from my childhood. I grew up in a small town in the Piedmont region of Virginia. Rolling country hills, one high school, everyone was your neighbor, that sort of thing. It was me, my mother, my father, and my brother, and just for the purposes of the story, my brother is six years older than me. Well, my town was pretty small, as I said, 
so small that my family, my grandmother and her husband, and my great-grandmother and her husband all lived in three separate houses, about a mile apart from each other. Once my great-grandfather died in 1989, my grandma moved in with her mother to help take care of her, as she was getting old in years herself. This didn't bother my grandma, as she and her husband's house was only 500 feet down the gravel road. I don't remember too much about my great granny. I just remember that she was always very grumpy, and that she would always yell at my brother and I when we would go over to her house to play. My brother and I would do this because our house was very small, and our great granny's house was big, an open Cape Cod style house with plenty of room to run around and spread out our toys. When my great-granny passed away in the first week of February 1994, it took a toll on my family, because within that same week, my grandfather passed away as well. This means that my grandma lost her mom and her husband, both within about five days' time. I also should mention that my great-granny was on hospice care, and she died in the comfort of her home, in her chair surrounded by her family. As I grew on in age, about 8 to 10 years old, I started to retain a better memory about that house, and how honestly creepy it was. The upstairs in particular, as my brother and I were ever really allowed up there. This became especially true since my grandma ended up selling her and her husband's house down the gravel road, and permanently living in this one. And due to the trauma of losing her mother and husband in one week, she developed a pretty bad hoarding habit. Sometimes when my brother and I were visiting, my grandma would be occupied with her Avon downstairs, and we would sneak upstairs to snoop through all the four cluttered rooms. But one room up there always caught my attention. I found myself feeling very lightheaded whenever I would go near it, and sometimes, Feelings of unease or dread would overcome me. It was just your normal room, very small, hardwood floors, and only a twin bed and a small dresser, and a lot of junk, like old Christmas boxes, Avon products, and my great granny's worn clothes. But over in the corner of the room, right beside the small crawl-in storage area, was a mirror. I always found myself strangely attracted to this mirror for some reason. It gave me an eerie sort of feeling, one that I can still very much recall to this day. I often caught my brother giving it a strange glance every now and then, too. It wasn't until I started seeing this mirror in my dreams that I began to question its history and why my consciousness was showing it to me in my sleeping state of mind. The dreams were very vivid, and as frightening as they were, I never questioned during the dream itself what was happening or why I was there. I sort of felt like I was there for a reason. They all started with me standing on the porch of the house, staring at the door. It was nighttime and quiet all around me with a slight breeze, a very warm and comfortable summer night. The dream progressed with me making my way into the house, except something was a bit off. I was floating and whenever I would enter a room inside, the door would open for me. All the lights were off inside, but I could still see from the full moon eerily casting its bright light through the open windows, the outside breeze making the curtains dance around inside. Everything seemed to be in slow motion. I make my way upstairs where I'm guided each time to the same room with the mirror, this is the part of the dream where I sense an impending feeling of doom. I make my way in front of the mirror, but oddly enough, I never see my reflection. I'm forced to stare at it, when all of a sudden an apparition of my great-granny appears. Her skin looks gray and cold, her eyes dark and hollow. The uneasy feeling grows more and more as I start to realize that I am now aware that I'm dreaming. I'm scared to death, and I need to wake myself up, somehow. Then, all of a sudden, the image in the mirror turns truly sinister. Her mouth widens, and her eyes glow a deep shade of red, and she lets out the most terrifying scream. 
This is when I wake up, covered in sweat. I had that exact dream a very many number of times growing up, but I never knew its significance, if there was any at all. I never told anyone, not even my grandma. Fast forward to about four years ago in 2012. My grandma lost her battle to cancer on Mother's Day. My family and I took part in the huge responsibility of cleaning up that house, as we had plans to sell it and move to San Antonio, Texas, where we currently are. The dream had escaped me for some time. I hadn't had it in about 10 years. But when my brother and I, now in our 30s, had the duties of cleaning out that room, the eeriness of it all returned to me. We had a lot of fun times up here, snooping around, didn't we, little brother, he said. I don't remember too much of it, but yeah, fun times, I said. My brother lifts his finger and points. Hey, do you remember that mirror right there? Yeah, I said. It was always really creepy to me, but um, why do you ask? To which he replied, just wondering. I'm not sure if you ever knew, actually, but... That mirror was our great granny's favorite mirror from her childhood. Then it just so happens that right below that mirror, directly parallel to downstairs, is the chair that our great granny died in. As if that didn't make my skin crawl enough, he pauses for a quick second, smiles, and with a bit of a confused look, he says, You know, for some reason, I used to have the strangest dreams about that mirror. I've been feeling incredibly shitty lately. Turns out going through a breakup and letting go isn't the easiest thing in the world, and I just haven't been happy. Yesterday I had a shower, and after getting out, I was looking at my foggy reflection in the steamed up mirror. It was one of those weird self-reflection moments that you see on TV or something. I drew a smiley face with my finger over my own face. Dramatic? Yeah, probably. But I just felt like doing it. So, just now, after having a bath, I was looking at myself in the same mirror while drying my hair. The mirror had since cleared and steamed over again, so my original smiley face had gone. But now, there was another, smaller one, slightly to the right of where mine had been. I know people are rightly going to be skeptical, and I am too. I'm fully aware of paradelia and similar effects, so maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just parts of the mirror that unsteamed or whatever, and that's how it looked afterward. But it still looks like a drawn face to me. I did think it could have been my dad, but he always complains if I draw on the mirror or car windows because it takes so long to clear or something like that. I don't really know the science of it but I just know that it annoys him. I'll ask him tomorrow. Part of me is hoping it's my dad, but the other part is hoping that it wasn't, and that this is just my own little message from somebody who's watching. If it wasn't him that did it, I think it's kind of nice. Do spirits pick up on people's feelings? Was it someone watching over me and giving me a smiley face back? I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's an experience that really sat with me and I just thought I'd share it. This happened a long time ago, when my daughter was about two. She's now away at college, so I would estimate that this happened in about 2000. I'd been out shopping with my daughter, and she was crying on the way home in the car because she had dropped her sunglasses and couldn't reach them. I couldn't reach them either, and I told her that she would have to wait until we got home. When we got home, I grabbed the glasses from the floor of the car, took her out of her car seat, and we went in the house. As I carried her up the stairs, she was playfully trying to fit her little toddler sunglasses onto me. We were being silly and giggling, and I said, let's go see how mommy looks in the mirror with these on and we went straight to the bathroom to check out my new shades. I turned on the light and held her up to the mirror over the sink. We were just being silly and making faces at each other, when suddenly I noticed something in the reflection that should not have been there. As you look into the bathroom mirror with the door open, you could see the entire living room, which would be behind you, reflected in the mirror. My father, 
who passed away in 1996, so about four years before this even happened, was seated at the end of the sofa, smiling at me. It was like I was frozen. I stood there, looking at him in the mirror, and absolutely couldn't move. I just gaped at him, then looked at my daughter's face in the mirror to see if she had noticed him. She was still too busy grinning and playing with the glasses to notice. I had enough time to get a really good look at him and note what he was wearing, which was rather nondescript. Just an off-white long-sleeved dress shirt, no tie, and dark slacks. Interestingly, this is not how he was dressed when we buried him. He was sitting rather casually, with one leg crossed over the other, and his left arm outstretched along the arm of the sofa. The whole vision, or whatever you want to call it, probably didn't even last 30 seconds, but it seemed like forever. After staring at him in stunned silence, I finally spun around with the baby in my arms to look out the door into the living room, and he was gone. My father passed away very suddenly, and I like to think that he came back just to have a peek at the granddaughter that he unfortunately never knew. He certainly seemed to be enjoying the little show we were putting on in the bathroom that day, judging by the grin he had on his face. A week or so after this happened, I was at my mom's house with my daughter, and my mom and I were talking at the kitchen table while my daughter played on the floor. Suddenly, she got up off the floor and walked over to an empty kitchen chair and said, That's Pop Pop's chair. To my knowledge, no one had ever told her that my father had had a favorite chair at the table where he always sat. I said to her, How do you know that that's Pop Pop's chair? She replied, Because he told me when I saw him last night. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I am an atheist, I'm a skeptic, yet something unexplainable happened during a seance at my 16th birthday party a decade ago. It was autumn of 2006. My mother, sister, and I had just moved to a major city from a suburban town about six hours away. As I was a student in a new school, I had decided that inviting some acquaintances over for my birthday would be a good way to get to know people. About 15 to 20 teens showed up at my house at around 7 p.m. Most of the faces I recognized, but some of them I had never met before. I was excited that so many people had showed up, but very nervous to meet new people. A few hours in, we had all become fast friends and were all looking for a bit of fun. A girl I shared Spanish class with, Maria, thought it would be a great idea to hold a seance. Her grandma, a native of Puerto Rico, practiced the art and had taught her a few things throughout her life. Maria seemed to be familiar with the idea of talking to spirits, and we were all down for just about anything. Maria sat up on the living room floor and turned out every light in the house. She gathered a group of people to sit in a circle and hold hands. She told us that we would be reaching out to her deceased cousin, and that it was safest to start with somebody that she had a direct connection to. I was so nervous, but eager to see what would happen. Everyone became very quiet and still. The wind picked up outside, knocking on the walls and windows. You could hear the age of the house declaring its burden of weight. The connection we all had in that moment was eerie and beautiful. Together we joined hands and closed our eyes. Maria began speaking in Spanish. I couldn't understand most of what she was saying, but out of the words I did know, it seemed like she was speaking about her cousin. Maria's voice grew louder and stronger with every word. It seemed like she spoke for an eternity as she commanded the energy in the room. Suddenly, she stopped. Unaware of what was happening, I opened my eyes. The wavering candlelight was the only light source and it was pitch black outside of our circle. In an instant, we heard the sound of glass shattering on the dining room floor. The shrieks of boys and girls alike broke the silence. I panicked. This had my full attention. Maria told everybody to stay put, 
and she began speaking in a calm voice. Hector, is that you? No response. Hector, this is Maria. I'm reaching out to tell you that I love you. I hope you have found some peace. No response. I looked around the room in hopes to find out who was behind the shattering of glass. Everyone was accounted for. No one had left. Then, the sound of a chair being dragged echoed throughout the house. I looked toward the foyer, where the dining room entrance is, just around the bend. I've heard the sound of my dining room chairs moving across the floor many times. There was no mistaking that sound. It was all too familiar, but it filled me with terror. If everyone was in the living room, then who was in the dining room? For a moment, the dragging ceased. I thought it was over. It wasn't. We watched as a chair flew across the foyer and crashed into the mirror that hung from the back of the front door. Everyone started screaming in terror. Someone in the group broke the circle, causing a chain reaction across the whole group. Maria freaked out, exclaiming, No! We all stood up and turned on the lights. This is over, Maria, I said. I walked into the foyer to see a dining room chair on its side. The mirror hanging on the back of the front door was cracked. My mom is going to kill me, I said. Hey, guys? Where's the broken glass? Someone asked. I picked up the chair and walked into the dining room. I expected to see a shattered vase, but there was nothing there. I heard something shattering in this room, Brandy said. I did too, said someone else, but I don't see anything though. What's going on? I don't know, but I don't think that was Hector, Maria said. We broke the circle, so now we'll never know. Es estupido. A look of confusion swept across my face. Mira, you're probably going to have something in your house now. You might want to call a priest and get your house blessed. My cousin did something like this once, and it messed him up for life, Santiago said. We decided that it was time to clean up and wrap up the party. People started saying their goodbyes and left for home. About six people decided they wanted to stay the night, so we had a small slumber party. We left the light on in the dining room, just in case. The next day, the rest of the party guests left. As the last guest left, I closed the door behind them only to see a reminder of the night before, the broken mirror. Finally alone in the house, I started replaying the events in my mind and walking through the foyer and dining room. I searched the entire house for a shattered glass, but I couldn't find anything. I came to the conclusion that someone probably cleaned it up before I could see it for myself. With one mystery solved, I was determined to figure out how someone could have snuck into the dining room and thrown the chair. The living room couch borders the wall next to the entrance into the foyer. It's possible that someone snuck in there when I had my eyes closed in the hand circle, and I just missed them. But if someone did, I didn't know who. It seemed to me that everybody had been accounted for when we were sitting in the living room listening for a response. But I guess anything is possible. I decided to take a picture of the rooms and share them in class on Monday. I took a photo of the hallway, between the dining room and the foyer. The living room is off to the right of the foyer, and a photo of the mirror, behind the front door. I opened my laptop and downloaded them from the camera so that I could share them to MySpace. That's when I noticed that something was off about the photo of the mirror. There seems to be a figure between the staircase and the lamp. I checked the photo on the camera. It was the same thing, a figure in the mirror. Over the last decade, I've had a really hard time trying to figure out what it is, if it's anything at all. Like I said, I'm an atheist and a skeptic, but maybe someone has an answer that I just haven't considered yet. At this point, I'm open to anything. Most of these experiences are second-hand. They mostly happened to my best friend at the house he used to live in. I had one experience in the house, and I'll start with that because it's the least interesting. The stuff that happened to my friend is much more difficult to explain. This happened when I was around 21, 
four years ago. I was picking up my friends so we could go out to a movie, and I had come inside to hang out in the kitchen with his mom while he finished getting ready. It was already dark out, and the house was mostly dark too. Only the light from the kitchen was on. I got tired of waiting for him, so I decided to head out to my car to listen to music while I waited. I walked down the darkened hallway toward the front door. The way the house was situated, the front sitting room was off to the right as you walked toward the door. In that room, against the wall, was a couch, and over it, a large oval mirror. As I walked past the sitting room, I was overcome with this feeling of dread. I knew that I had to keep my eyes straight ahead on the front door, and that if I turned my head to the right, and looked in the mirror, I would see something that shouldn't be there. Something that would give me nightmares. I practically ran out the front door. Later, when I told my friend about that feeling, he just sort of nodded sagely and said, Yeah, I don't look in that mirror. That's the only experience I've ever had with the paranormal. And let's face it, it was really just a frightening feeling in a dark house, and mirrors are creepy anyway. But my friend swears up and down that the following experiences are true, and since he's generally very honest, rational, and not attention-seeking, I believe him. I have no proof, just his words that I choose to believe are the truth. My friend believes there were at least two spirits in that house. One was benevolent, the other less so and there were a few experiences that seemed to be isolated incidents. He says that he would sometimes see a woman's face in his closet. She was the nice spirit. He said that she seemed like she was just there, watching over him, that she never spoke, just appeared sometimes and watched him. The other spirit was not so kind. My friend says that he would often feel as though something were following him down the long hallway that led from the bedrooms to the kitchen. On one occasion, he says that he tripped over something hard, but when he looked down, the hallway was devoid of any object that could have caused him to trip. On another occasion, he felt something like claws scratch his calf while walking down the same hallway. Again, there was nothing around that could have caused such a sensation. This last experience is the one that I think is the creepiest of all, the one for which I have absolutely no explanation. My best friend and two of our other friends were sitting in the front room, the same room with the couch and the creepy mirror. They were just watching TV and chatting. Suddenly my best friend noticed that they were not alone in the room. Sitting in a chair that was only moments before completely empty, was a man he had never seen before. He was dressed in an old-fashioned, think 1940s, suit and hat. He says the man had a beard, and that he didn't speak or look at them. He just sat there. He stared at the man, stunned. After a minute or two, the man faded away. This is the part that really freaked me out. My other friend who was in the room saw him too and both friends later described him the exact same way. The third friend only saw an empty chair. I'm sure there are logical explanations for some or maybe all of these things, but I don't know how to explain these things. I'm just passing along some stories that I hope somebody will find interesting. My family home is 30-ish years old, and some strange things have happened in it. This happened in 2009, and we still don't have a clear explanation for it. In the house, some slightly strange things happened, like the radio and TV going on and off, and random doors opening. Lots of cracked mirrors and what sounds like voices. But I live in Ireland, and it's quite windy a lot, so I put those things down to that and the odd surge of electricity or something. The one standout thing is from when my sister was finishing school. I think high school is the equivalent in the US. She's an excellent student, and she wanted to go on to get into a course that's pretty hard to get into for uni, so she was under a bit of pressure. 
In her room, there was a long mirror hanging in between two windows. The end of her bed came to the end of the window, and there is a section of wall where the mirror hangs, so it's hanging over the floor. The head of the bed is about six-ish feet or more away from the mirror. The mirror was pretty heavy and strung up on cord and hanging on the wall. One night, she was dreaming, and in the dream, she saw a woman. As soon as she saw her, she said she felt an evil feeling and immediately knew that she shouldn't have seen her. Then, she woke up to the mirror smashing over her. She was screaming so much my parents came running, thinking that something terrible had happened. Her face and arms were cut, and to be honest, she was pretty traumatized. This room is now my bedroom because she's too afraid to sleep in it. My parents couldn't figure out how that mirror came off the wall and broke over her. The cord at the back was undamaged, and the mirror is pretty heavy, so it's unlikely that she would have been able to lift it up off the hook herself and then over her head. Everyone was really freaked out, and we all slept in the same room that night. Even my dad, who in no way believes in the supernatural. We spoke about it the next day and agreed not to talk about it outside the family, so people wouldn't keep asking my sister about it. Plus, she was terrified and couldn't really talk about it anyway. To this day, she still can't talk about it, and even writing this and remembering it, makes me not want to sleep in my parents' house for a while. About four months after it happened, my sister was doing work experience after her finals with my mom's friend who's a psychologist. She had a local handyman in around her home, which was also where her office is. He met my sister for a few minutes in the kitchen one day when she was taking a break, and then they both went on about their days. Later that night, my mom's friend called to our house to discuss something with my mom. She said the handyman had told her that there was something dark with my sister, that it was a woman the same age as her that couldn't move on and who had come to my sister through a mirror. He said that she needed help. Apparently he sees things but doesn't really talk about it as it freaks him out, but he felt that this was important. My mom immediately asked my dad and I if we had told anybody, and we hadn't. So there's absolutely no way that that man, or my mom's friend, could have known about what had happened with the mirror. We still have no explanation for what happened, and mirrors in our house are constantly cracking. There isn't a bad energy in the house or anything, but I do have to sleep with a light on at home, and normally I like sleeping in the dark. As a note, a man was pushed in front of a train adjacent to our land, and there was an old woman that lived in a hut thing until she died, after which our house was built and we moved in. I don't know if that has anything to do with what happened. Apart from that, it's a normal house.